Hi, and welcome to our Happy Life exclusive. This is a series of candid and authentic conversations with myself and other people of influence who've inspired me and many others to live a very happy life. Today I have with me a very dear friend, Kelly Copeland. Kelly is an author, a speaker, and TV host of Kelly and Jerry, which is a weekly talk show on Victory Channel. She has a passion to see people know Jesus more intimately, just as she has. I know Kelly's full-time love is her family, and she's also just living her very best life with her four grown children and soon to be five grandchildren. Hello, Kelly. I am so glad to have you with me today. You know, we have, we're like sisters because we have the same mom and dad in the sense because <laughs> Gloria, uh, Gloria and Kenneth Copeland are spiritual parents to Gary and I. So I just love you and we're friends and I appreciate you taking the time to share today with us. Thank you. Oh, uh, Trenda, you know I love you. I'm happy to share my parents with you. Thank you. Thank you. But they're still <laughs> your I'm parents. I'm really honored to be here. <laughs> they are my parents. They're they awesome. Are. But I sh kind of share them with the world. So, but especially happy to share them with you guys because you guys are, you guys have meant so much to me personally in ministry and in every way. So to be here with you to talk about my favorite person, Jesus, is a, a real joy. It is a joy to be together and to sh share Jesus. We were talking earlier uh, yesterday, actually, about all the things that God has brought us through and to and where we are in our walk with Him. And I just, you ministered to me speaking there, so I know today we'll touch on some of those topics. But your mom and dad are very special. You were, you were raised in a faith-filled family. And even though they're spiritual mentors to us, they are your mom and dad. And so we're just grateful you shared them. Thank you for sharing them. And thank you for the price that you've paid. You know, a lot of people think that, uh, yes, we have victory. And yes, God's grace and goodness. And he's a reward of those that seek him. But there is a price to uh, what you've done, sharing your mom and dad. And I know my kids feel that price at times too, where you just want your mom and dad to yourself, but you share them with other people because they're so wonderful. But you're so wonderful. You have, uh, you have their DNA, you have Jesus' DNA, and it's a, a great thing. So I know today a lot of people are feeling, especially women are feeling all kinds of emotions. Uh, everything from being feeling overwhelmed uh, the warfare around us is, it, it's increased. The temperature's turned up. There's no, no doubt about that. Some people are feeling anger. Some people are feeling a uh, fear and just feelings like, how do I navigate through this? But everything we've learned, all that we've been practicing for, like game day, it's game day and everything we've learned. And now we just have to do what we've learned to practice it. So, you know, we're talking about peace and how you've, entered into God's rest. And so I'd love to share with others today so they can enter in that rest if they're maybe feeling some of those emotions, feeling overwhelmed or feeling fear or anguish or anger, frustrations. We've all felt those things, right? You feel those things. I feel those things. There's, that's all common to all of us. Sometimes we think people of faith never feel that way. Well, I've had people tell me that they felt like that because they felt that way or because they even had a problem or they had something bad happen or they got sick that they, there must be something wrong with their faith. And what I'd like to do is just throw that idea out the door right yes. away because yes. we have stuff too. Yes. Everybody and does. I had to learn to be, because God called me to be upfront about the things that have gone on in my life. And it doesn't mean that I have to tell you every detail of my life that's going on right now today. There are things I'm walking through now and I'm learning by following him how to walk through what I'm walking through today. Yes. And people will judge you because something happened. And, you know, just throw that in the garbage because we live on this earth. There's no promise that evil wouldn't come. There's a promise that we would uh, come to the other side. Yes. There's a promise that we would overcome. Yes. Evil comes evils out here, but we win. That's right. If we don't let go. We win. So don't let anybody shame you over what you're going through. You can't control other people either. So if you're in a situation where other people are involved, maybe hurting you, causing you difficulty, you can only do you. 
you may be part of the problem. You probably are in some general way. <laughs> and it's awesome to find that out because you can do something about you yes. with the Lord Jesus. And that's about it. Like it's you true. cannot control other people. And it's a frustrating, you can pray for them if you're not trying to control them. And so the best thing to do is get out of Jesus's way where others are concerned. <laughs> yes. But, you know, just understanding these things is half the battle. Mm, that's and good. I feel like if we could help you today to not only understand the times we're in, the strategy, the, the, the strategic times we're in, and explain to you what you're feeling. I feel like I've had some insight from the Lord about what's, why all the feels right now, why all the trouble, why all the stuff, why all it feels like things, maybe it feels to you like things don't work today like they did 10 years ago, the things mm -hmm. you know. So I just, there's a lot of things we can know to get us on the same page as Jesus. And then we're ready to win. That's good, Kelly. That's good. And it's growing us. Like what you said about the response, our response to the situation, we can't control the person. Sometimes the circumstances, I know for me, when circumstances come, I want to get, I want to get it fixed right now. I want to say in Jesus name, it's done, it's finished. And it is in that spirit realm, but I still have to walk it out. And that's the part yeah. that's sometimes difficult. We think it's like a magic wand. It's going to just disappear and it's not going to require us to stand. It's not going to require us to have some faith that endures faith with patience. That's the part I've been trying to work with is the patience piece because yeah. some of these things are not overnight fixes, even though they're already done. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's that amen and there it is. There is time between those two and being able to stand once we've prayed, once we've trusted, we've read the scripture, we see the promise, uh, we stand on that promise and we receive it as ours. We pray it, we speak it. There is that time sometimes, and that for me has been a challenge too. You were talking to me about resting in the Lord and how you've learned to do that. But I want to hear what you were just sharing about what has changed that some of the things that were working maybe for us before are a little bit more challenging now, or there is a, a, a stand that we have to make and the stand's a little longer. I, I feel like we were, put, we were lifting maybe five, you know, maybe even one pound weights and now it feels like the weights have gone to more of a serious press. And yeah. that takes more of us. It takes more energy, more stamina. Uh, and I, everything we've been practicing for working up. Some of us aren't. I know for me, I thought I was so strong. But when some of these things hit, I realized, wow, Lord, the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, how weak is your strength? And so recognizing my weaknesses, and that's not a bad thing, like you said, I need to know where I'm weak because I can't make myself, I can't get in the word of God and strengthen myself or trust Jesus in that area and say, Jesus, come in here and work in this area. I thought I was strong, but it was a little bit of a facade. <laughs> I, need to, I need you to, you've showed me now, you've revealed my heart. You've revealed my weakness. Show me now the plan to lift the weights and get stronger. Well, it's, it is life and death that we know our weakness. It is. You know, everybody wants to know the enemy's weakness but you better know yours mm. because your enemy is studying you. You know, True. your enemy is not coming at you. The devil is not, the devil has not been beating me up in the area of my strength. True. He'll attack and your strength with your weakness. He'll attack your weakness to destroy the impact of your yes. strength. You know, yes. typically where we're strong, he can't get in, but he doesn't need to get in there. And because we are, humans tend to not want to look at their weakness. We like to see everybody else's, but we don't want to see ours. And we don't listen when someone else tries to express a difficulty with the, us that could expose our weakness. That soul, our soul is where the weak places live. Mm -hmm. And your, your soul will protect those. Yes. <laughs> We don't, if, if your, if your weakness is in the area of shame, and honestly, I think unless you've specifically dealt with it, the devil has ways of planting shame in us mm -hmm. because if we're, if we're not really strong in our emotions, we're going to have shame. 
Mm. If we're not really strong in our will, we're going to, I don't, I don't know what to call it. I feel like, I feel like the, the strength that I grew up with in the household that I grew up in and faith and authority, I feel like my will is strong. Um, and, wh- and where my mind is connected to my will, it's strong. My emotions were not something that I spent time with. I didn't have learning over it. I didn't have anybody teaching me on it. We just kind of didn't go there because we were over here pressing into what we were called to do. But that doesn't alleviate the fact that I have emotions. And if they're not given to Jesus or I don't know how to operate with them, Mm -hmm. then the devil's going to use them against me. Right. And And God gave us those emotions. Absolutely. They're so powerful. Yes. I mean, the life you can have with Jesus with fullness of emotion. Wow. The life you can have with people when you have the fullness of your emotions. Wow. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit me at drenda.com and subscribe now.